SpaceX is planning to launch two people on a week-long trip around the moon. Not astronauts, though, paying customers. Those customers have already put down what's being described as a significant deposit to travel aboard the fully automated capsule sometime next year. And SpaceX isn't the only one in the race to the moon. NASA is also considering sending astronauts to the moon in 2019. That would be 50 years since man first stepped foot on the lunar surface. Philip Larson is a former space advisor to President Obama, as well as a former representative for SpaceX. He now serves as the Assistant Dean of Engineering and Applied Sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder. Phil, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Elaine. So SpaceX is known for its ambitious deadlines. So how likely is it that SpaceX will be able to launch these passengers by the end of next year? It's definitely an ambitious uh, timetable, but I think, you know, Elon Musk has said before, he doesn't talk about dates uh, that aren't technically achievable. So there's definitely a path to doing this mission by the end of next year. Now, if it you know, were to hap happen to slip a few months or even a year or two, it's still a super exciting announcement uh, and a super exciting mission uh, for them to do. Uh, it, it certainly would be um, fascinating to watch that unfold. But in the past couple of years, as you well know, two of SpaceX's rockets exploded, one during launch and the other during a fueling procedure on a launch pad. How safe is this mission, especially since there won't be a human pilot on board? Well, I think it's, you know, they won't do it unless uh, it passes a number of, you know, box checks on the path to this launch. They're going to make sure this is safe, and uh, there's going to be a number of launches between now and when this mission would carry out. And so, you know, SpaceX, yeah, has had challenges, uh, just like every major, you know, endeavor in space. There's, there's risk, and there's, you know, difficulties, and it's a hard business, but... I'm, you know, I'm pretty confident that they won't carry this mission out uh, unless it is safe. And the, the spacecraft they'll be using, the upgraded Dragon spacecraft, has a unique capability basically to save uh, the crew in the event of an issue with the rocket during launch. So I think it, you know, they won't do it unless, it's, uh, unless risk is mitigated and it's safe. Well, President Trump has expressed an interest in having the U.S. space program uh, return to the moon by 2020. How has NASA responded to that idea? So they're studying, uh, NASA is studying kind of moving up a mission that was already on the books for the early 2020s, seeing if they can do it before uh, 2020. But, you know, it's going to be challenging uh, unless they get the funding that will be required to do something of that magnitude. And so that's why I think these, you know, unique partnerships where you have NASA partnering with SpaceX, something we worked on during the Obama administration, and now you see SpaceX and other companies delivering cargo and soon crew to the International Space Station. So to get more bang for the taxpayer buck, you want to do these kind of public-private partnerships uh, in space. And what are the differences, Phil, between NASA's flight and the SpaceX mission? There's a number of differences. One is definitely cost. Uh, NASA's rocket that they're working on is, you know, a bit more expensive than SpaceX's launches. Um, and it also, you know, is kind of an old-ish technology. SpaceX, you know, if you've seen the fun videos of them, you know, launching a bunch of rockets, but they're also landing them, and they're soon going to be reusing them, I think, later this month will be a watershed moment for lowering the cost of access to space. And so, uh, you know, with the NASA rocket, SpaceX's rocket, it's good to have multiple capabilities, but, uh, you know, I think the SpaceX Falcon Heavy uh, is, is kind of a new and exciting technology uh, for the nation to have. Mm. Well, this race to the moon is being described, uh, as you just sort of alluded to there, as old space versus new space. What role is NASA expected to play in the private space industry? Well, if you think about, you know, the space race that we all know from the 60s and 70s where we, you know, won kind of the race to the moon, that was governments against governments. And now you know, 60 years after the Sputnik moment that launched that space race, we're in this new era, new exciting era uh, in space where private companies, you know, entrepreneurial titans of industry are competing. And I think we're all winners. As taxpayers, we're winners. NASA will gain more capabilities. You know, we'll have more capabilities in space as a nation, uh, both privately and government. 
And so they, you know, one of the things we did work on in the Obama administration was using NASA uh, to partner uh, with these private sector companies, kind of acting as a venture capitalist, seeding new jobs, new industries uh, in the private sector. And, and then they get the benefit of more capabilities at lower cost. A lot to look forward to potentially in the years ahead. Philip Larson, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. My pleasure, Elaine. Thank you.